Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero Sixty. Now on today's episode, we're finally getting the die case, die case, not die cast, brakes fitted to the Vargas car. We've had them for probably nearly a month now. I don't know where the time goes, um, but we finally got the time to get the car on the hoist, get them fitted up and make sure they're gonna fit correctly. That's mainly what I wanna achieve with this video. Just make sure they've sorted out all the fitment issues and they do fit straight out of the box. Um, in other news, I have finally managed to bench connect to a CAS and a Combi and a DME. Everything's working. Oh, it's taken a while to get that sorted, but that's good. Um, now, these are the brakes we are replacing. I think I've mentioned it on camera, but the Vargas brakes do have a rather hefty lip on the edge of the rotor. Um, I mean, they are quite badly grooved, but the main thing with them is they do vibrate rather badly. Um, so hopefully we're gonna get rid of the brake shutter with these. I mean, it's a bit of a shame because they've got heaps of meat on the pads, but they do look a bit manky. Um, and hopefully the other one's going to look a bit better. Now, I did mention it in the unboxing video. We have only gone for three 60 mil rotors, I think. I'm going to have to double check that. But we haven't gone for the 380 mil rotors that are on my car. But I'm hoping that with the new brake pads, or the upgraded brake pads, we end up with just as good a braking quality as we get with my 380 mil rotors. Um, I've been thinking about it a fair bit over the last couple of weeks since I knew I was going to do a video on this, and I need to say this. I don't think most N54 cars need a brake upgrade. If you put some decent pads, some decent rotors, put some braided lines, they're going to be pretty good. I mean, the standard brakes are good. They're nearly as big as M3 brakes, but... On the same note, as my car has been getting quicker and quicker, and I'm doing 100 to 200 runs more often, and braking hard from 220, 230, 240 k's an hour, I notice it. When I get into this car, which has just standard brakes, I mean, they do vibrate, but you've still got the power of a standard brake. Or even when I drive Dylan's car, I like getting back into my car and having the control that I get with my Chinese brakes. I will say that, but don't feel you need them. The main reason to fit these brakes in my opinion, is looks. Because they do look cool. They really do. All right, let's see how cool they look when they're on the car. I'm gonna pull the old brakes off. If you've got any questions about removing brakes, just let me know. Um, the only thing I will do, I will say this, do one corner at a time, because when you undo the brake lines, you're gonna lose a lot of fluid, and you don't want it to just uh, siphon all the fluid out of the brake reservoir. So get the old caliper off, get the new one connected as quickly as you can just to avoid losing brake fluid, although we will have to do a full flush, but it'd be good not to suck any air into the ABS pump. All right, let me get the old one off. Okay, so I got the two, the old disc and the new disc. It all come off pretty easy. Now what I've done, I've actually left the caliper hanging there which is gonna, it's not great for the brake line, but we're not gonna use it again. Um, but just keep all the oil enclosed until we've got everything mounted up. What I'm thinking is I'll get the caliper mounted up, the disc and everything with the new brake line, and then we'll just undo that caliper there and, and make as little amount of mess as possible because I just don't like the brake fluid going everywhere. But just quickly, I'm gonna show you the two rotors now. This is a 355 versus the 348 mil standard rotor. Um, yeah, I mean, it's really not much bigger. I'm, I'm starting to think maybe I should have gone for a bigger rotor, but we want to be able to run 18s and just have a better wheel choice, basically. Um, which, with my car, with the 380mm rotors, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, oh, the other thing I will just mention quickly, that is a full steel rotor, steel hat. It's friggin' heavy. This is much lighter. A much lighter and a much nicer piece of metal to be looking at. Um, I'm going to get the Rotor bolted on. Uh, the bracket is already on. The only thing I had to do with the bracket is just trim off this small piece of metal off of the dust shield, and that's made room for the bracket. I have also wire wheeled the hub just so that this is all perfectly smooth, so that this has got a perfect surface to mount up to. It's all going pretty easy. Nothing weird so far. I'll keep cracking on and give it up that in a second. Right, calipers bolted on. They actually supply them with quite a few different 
shims, a few different sizes as well, so you can get your alignment right. Um, I'll try and show the camera. I haven't used any shims, and I'd say it's perfect. So the the curve around the pad against the center of the disc is perfect. And looking over the back, looking straight down, it is aligned that way. Everything's pretty good. Alignment is perfect without using any shims. Um, but I guess if you've got a car that's a bit different, you have got shims to get it perfect. I'm not gonna use them, I think that's good. One thing that is scaring me is the depth of the caliper. Don't forget, this is Die Case's own design caliper. Um, it is not the ones that are on my car, and she's, they're quite thick. They're a big old caliper, which I've already got dirty. Uh, I might just put the wheel on, just make sure the wheel's still gonna fit, because that's a bit scary. The whole point of these was to keep the original 18s, keep the sleeper look going, and not have to buy any more wheels, to be honest. But, is that... Okay, we're good. Plenty of room. I say plenty. It's bloody close. I'll just put a wheel nut in there because that is tight. Guys, that's. You wouldn't want to go any smaller with these wheels. Ooh. Mint. That does look cool. That looks really cool. Oh, yes. That is... Oh, I'm happy. And, yeah, we got a fair bit of room between the wheel and the caliper. I thought I was going to get close, but we're good. Standard wheels, no spaces. We may put some spaces on this car, just give it a little bit of stance. But I think that's cool. Whoa. All right. Um, I guess from this point, I've just got to... I just want to double-check everything's done up properly and connect the brake line. Okay, so that is the right-hand side front one all done. And these brake lines are so much better than what they provided with the set that I got last year. Um, they just fit perfectly. Perfectly up out of the way, away from the wheel. That's good. Um, again, no shims needed on this one. Caliper is perfectly aligned. Pad is perfectly aligned against the circular part of the rotor. Happy with it, happy with it. Right, it's time to get onto the rear. Um, I've already got it laid out, I've cheated. Uh, I'm going to get on with taking the old one off, and the rear involves some cutting, a lot more cutting than on the front, so you'll see me in a second when it comes time to mounting the bracket up. So this is where you've actually got to trim a fair bit of this heat shield away. I just thought I'd show you guys for interest sake. So this is the bracket that the China manufacturers were supplying with the calipers last year. This is what you get now. Now obviously this is for the Rembo caliper and this is for their design. So it's a much smaller bracket, which is good. So it means it's gonna be less cutting. Um, but I, yeah, I kind of like that they pulled a lot of material out of it. So it's a bit lighter as well. Um, now all I'm gonna do is basically with some Trusty tin snips is cut on a diagonal, pretty much down to that corner. On, when I did the ones last year, I did have to cut this section out round here. Um, but I'm gonna time lapse it. I'm not gonna mark it or measure it. I'm just gonna cut where I think I need to cut. So I'm gonna crack on with it. Okay, so that's got all the, well, I've actually probably filed off a bit more than I needed to. If you are gonna do this, you could probably not be so lazy and actually take this off the car and cut it nicely. Uh, the only thing I will say, if you do do it, you need to make sure that you've got clearance over the back here. You can see where I've sort of hacked it away. Just make sure that it's not 
close to the handbrake assembly because it will rub on the disc. The disc actually goes down into this groove here. But she's all done and I think it's time to mount the calipers up. And by mount the calipers, I definitely meant mount the rotor. <laughs> yes, I noticed as I started to bolt the caliper on. Um, rotor can go on. Cross-threading. Hmm. Right. And... One thing I would recommend, when I did the shield, heat shield trimming, whatever it is, dust shield trimming on my first set of brake upgrade, um, I didn't realize the disc was actually rubbing on that tin piece, but if you move it slightly, even with it in park, you can hear there's no rubbing. All right, time for the caliper. So let's see how it mounts up without any shims. And... Go from there. Now the rear calipers don't have the pads in. The pads on the rears are really hard to install when the calipers not actually mounted up, but super easy to install once it's mounted. So I'll put the pads in shortly. Um, in fact, I think it's ready to put the pads in now. To do the pads in the rear, you just gotta take this bracket out. So that then slides out. And the pads, I'll try and get you guys a better angle here. The pads then slide in, if you get them level. Then we have the rattle clip, and it's this massive rattle clip that makes them hard to fit. I mean, you shouldn't need to fit brake pads when the calipers aren't mounted, should you? That is the pads fitted. Okay, now what I'll do is just tighten the caliper up, but it appears Alignment's going to be pretty good for that one as well. All right, let's have a quick look. So it looks all pretty good. Nice, no rubbing. We are good. All right, all that's left now is to fit the brake line. And if we can get this on the camera angle. We've got the right length brake lines, unlike the last set that I ordered. Um, all right, I'm gonna get that wound in. It's probably a bit hard to film, but we've still got the original brake line here. I'm going to basically just try and swap them over as quickly as I can and go from there. Right. All right, we are all good. The brakes are all fitted up. All that's left is to bleed them, which since I've already done a video on bleeding, I might not do in this video, but I'll get the brakes bled tonight after I've edited this video up. Um, something I was gonna, I meant to touch on, I can't remember if I have, these ones do have different bleed nipples. That is a completely different bleed nipple to what's on mine, and I know some people had issues with the other style of bleed nipple. Um, 
we'll know once we've pressurized it and driven them if there's any issues with it. But I'm gonna end this video off here. We've got the dick, the die, the die case, dick case? I really don't know how to pronounce it. I, I kind of feel after talking to important people at what used to be dick ass and is now die case, they have a bit of a sense of humor and they think that the Western world will find it really funny. I think that's what they're going with it, I think. <laughs> We actually used to supply, a massive Aussie company that was Chinese owned used to supply radiators and they branded them 69 because they thought that would be really funny. Um, weird. Anyway, die case tech brakes. I kind of like them. Finish is really good. The rotors, I think, are, they're different. They are different. I forgot. They're fully coated where mine weren't coated on the inside for rust protection. I also haven't done anything with the bolts. I didn't use these. I've used the original bolts to mount the calipers and then the supply bolts to mount the calipers to the bracket. Sorry, I hope that made sense. Use the factory bolts to mount the brackets and then these, the supply bolts on the calipers. I want to see if they go rusty or if they've done something better with these. Um, but we'll see how we go. Plan with this is get the brakes bled up. Tomorrow's video will be on rear window regulators. I know you guys are excited to see that. And then we'll do some brake tests. Hopefully the day after that. Yeah, hopefully we'll We'll get out on the road and see how these pads go, see if they're any better, see if there's any issues with these. But as an install, that was pretty flawless. Um, they supply heaps of shims, heaps of shims, which I've not used any. Alignment is spot on, so that's good, but that doesn't mean you won't need them. Make sure you do check pad alignment when you fit them up, but you can see there, it's mint. Guys, I'm pretty happy with them. They look so cool. Will they be good? I think so. I think so. Let me know your thoughts on having the smaller rotors versus the larger ones. I mean, they look friggin' sick there, but they're not much bigger than the standard brakes, like five mil, but they do look cool. All right, enough waffle. It's all happening. Guys, thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.